Excellency, you have the floor. Um, Mr. Vice President, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me start by congratulating the Presidency of the 12th cycle of the Human Rights Council and also other members of the Bureau for their election to lead the work of the Council for the year to, uh, 2018. I assure you of Nigeria's unflinching support and cooperation. Permit me to also seize this opportunity to express Nigeria's most sincere appreciation for the overwhelming support extended to us during our quest for re-election to the Human Rights Council in October 2017. We'd like to assure you, our friends and partners, of our readiness to promote the achievement of the core mandates of the Council. Mr. Vice President, as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the 25th anniversary of the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, it is pertinent to recognize that the promotion and protection of human rights remains one of the most important modalities for the attainment of international peace and security. Nigeria remains strongly committed to ensuring the full and efficient implementation of the provisions of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. To this end, a number of human rights-related bills have been passed into law by our National Assembly. These are the Anti-Torture Act 2017, the Comprehensive Treatment and Care of Victims of Gunshot, uh, Gunshot Act 2017, and the National Senior Citizens Center Act of 2017. And uh, more human rights-related laws will be enacted as Nigeria continues to develop its legal and institutional frameworks towards fulfilling our international obligations. In the fight against terrorism, Nigeria appreciates and fully recognizes the imperative of respect for human rights and adherence to our international human rights obligations. With the establishment of a human rights desk in the Nigerian Defense Headquarters, our security agencies are continually being sensitized on the imperative of respect for human rights while countering terrorism. Similarly, Nigeria has launched a national action plan for preventing and countering violent extremism with particular focus on strengthening institutions and coordination in preventing and countering violent extremism, strengthening the rule of law, access to justice and human rights, engaging communities and building resilience, and integrating strategic communication. Furthermore, we have set up a judicial commission to review the compliance of the armed forces with the ethos and obligations of human rights, as well as applicable rules of engagement, especially in local conflicts and in the ongoing fight against terrorism. The report of the Commission has just been submitted to the Government for consideration and would like to assure you that all credible issues of human rights violations identified in the report will be dealt with in accordance with our laws. Mr. President, one of the cardinal priorities of the current Government in Nigeria is the fight against corruption. We believe that the right to development, which is of fundamental importance to Nigeria, is being hampered by the menace of corruption. At the just concluded African Union summit held in Addis Ababa, His Excellency President Mohamedou Buhari described corruption as one of the greatest evils of contemporary period. It rewards those who do not play by the rules by creating a system of distortion and diversion, thereby destroying all efforts at constructive, just and fair governance. It was in recognition of the President's avowed commitment to tackling the menace of corruption that the summit appointed him to champion the fight against corruption on the African continent. While corruption has become endemic in various societies, it should be highlighted that the availability of safe havens for proceeds of corruption remains the major attraction for corruption in our societies. 
Nigeria will therefore continue to seek international cooperation in its quest for unconditional repatriation of proceeds of corruption stashed in foreign jurisdictions to countries of origin. We remain resolute and focused in our fight against corruption because it undermines the full enjoyment of basic human rights and fundamental freedoms of our citizens. Migration and human trafficking are issues of great concern to Nigeria and indeed the international community. We reiterate our call for all states to respect the rights of migrants and accord them humane and dignified treatment in line with their international obligations. Transit and destination countries should give priority to saving the lives of vulnerable migrants, regardless of their immigration status. It was in this regard that Nigeria welcomed the adoption of the New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants and the ongoing efforts on the elaboration of a global compact for migration, as well as a global compact for refugees. We are committed to ensuring that none of our citizens is left to suffer in human and degrading treatment at the hands of human traffickers. In this regard, a delegation from Nigeria recently went to Libya to interface with the authorities with a view to ensuring that Nigerian and other migrants are duly protected and treated with dignity. In this regard, we emphasize the need for global synergy and cooperation in addressing the ugly incidents of human trafficking as well as the plight of migrants across the world. Mr. Vice President, Nigeria emphasizes the imperative of genuine and sustainable international cooperation based on the principle of universality, transparency and non-discrimination in accordance with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the United Nations Charter, the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action. Nigeria calls for the non-politicization of human rights issues. It is for this reason that Nigeria has endeavored to stand out as a voice of moderation by striving to bring the much needed balance and credibility to the work of the Human Rights Council. Nigeria has always held the opinion that the universal peer review mechanism serves as an important tool in ensuring compliance with international human rights obligations. To conclude, Mr. Vice President, we expect that at this session of the Human Rights Council, we will commit to turning a new page in the work of the Council, such that the aspirations and objectives that led to its establishment in 2006 are realized for the good of mankind. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Nigeria.